All right. Hello, everyone. Hope you all are having a great weekend. This is going to be a little bit of a different video. It's one I think I need to do. One I've probably should have done in the past. And that's to explain a little bit about what Mio Linux is. <clears throat> you know, I've often been asked, Dan, why do you make Mio Linux? <laughs> Actually, I've never been asked that. <laughs> A little leprechaun just came frolicking by and, and whispered that in my ear, so I thought it would sound good to say it. <laughs> but if anyone is wondering, what's the whole idea? Why Mio Linux? Why do you do this? Let me give you a brief history. Um, I bought... <clears throat> I bought our fir our first computer for our family back in 2006. Now I I had used computers, you know, at work, uh, uh, used them in school. We would go to the library if we ever needed to get on a computer for anything. We'd go to the library, not a big deal. But our daughter, uh, she would continuously ask me, "Daddy, when are you gonna get us a pewter?" When are you going to get us a pewter? <laughs> so I finally bought a pewter one day, and I still have it. And here it is. Maybe you can see this, if I'm holding it up correctly. A Sony Vio. And this bad boy came. I don't know if I can get that in close enough. This bad boy came with Windows Vista. I don't know if you can see that or not. Still has the Microsoft label on there. And I bought that computer in 2006. Bad boy came with two CPU <laughs> and one gigabyte of RAM. And how that thing ran Windows Vista with one gigabyte of RAM, I'll never know. <laughs> But it did good, you know, it did fine for a while. And it eventually, uh, I won't go into all the details, things kept going wrong with it. It kept having problems. <laughs> and I kept getting it fixed. And eventually, <clears throat> it got to where it would not, it wouldn't even boot anymore. I mean, it was so bogged down with stuff and so many viruses <laughs> and malware <laughs> were on that computer and I was faced with a decision uh, do I need to just let this computer go or do I need to do something about it and I don't I don't remember how I heard about Linux but somewhere Somehow I had heard about Linux. So one day at work, I downloaded Ubuntu. Oh, by the way, the computer's a 32 bit computer. <laughs> that was right around in that same transition where things were going from 32 bit to 64 bit. And stupid me bought a 32 bit computer. But anyway, I, I downloaded Ubuntu, put it on a I think I put it on a DVD, I don't remember, I put it on a disc. Went home, we had gone several weeks with no computer, and of course my wife and daughter were getting frustrated. <laughs> and I somehow managed to get Ubuntu installed on that computer, and it brought the computer back to life. However, the thing was slower than it was before <laughs> with the Windows Vista. <laughs> so I did some more exploring, and I think I eventually put uh, Lubuntu on it. <clears throat> eventually moved to Peppermint, 
and we ran peppermint. I mean, I went through several others. Uh, I, I won't go through all that. Eventually put Lubuntu on it. I mean, yeah, put Lubuntu and peppermint, and peppermint stayed on that computer for, I guess, a couple of years. Ran, ran really decent with uh, peppermint. And by this time, my interest in Linux had gotten peaked. And I bought another computer, second hand. <clears throat> I have never personally bought a computer for myself, brand new. I've bought my wife two computers. This computer that I'm doing this video on, I originally bought it for my wife. She, even though we used Linux exclusively for about two years, she never got used to it and she wanted another Windows computer. She had some online businesses that she was doing and she wanted a Windows computer so I bought this computer right here. It came with Windows 8.1 and this right here is the best computer I own now. It, it eventually bit the dust <laughs> with Windows 8.1 and I ended up buying her another new computer and I took this one and this is my best computer. I also have a couple of others that I test on but I've never had a really nice computer. But anyway my my interest in Linux had gotten peaked and right around the time I was doing a lot of distro hopping I mean I was going from one distro to another probably every week or every two weeks and every time that I would install a new Linux system by this time I had figured out what I liked and what I didn't like and I would spend so much time removing stuff that I didn't want to use and replacing it with the things that I did want to use. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I wish somebody would just make a base system where you could just install what you want on it. But that was kind of put back in my mind, you know. I eventually learned how to uh, <clears throat> build my own systems with things like a Debian net install or an Ubuntu Mini ISO Arch and I got to where I was really enjoying that and I thought wow this is neat I can build my own system I can put on it what I want I don't have to worry about removing all this other stuff and after a while that got tiresome too <laughs> so I started thinking to myself, man, I wish somebody would just build a base system that looks halfway decent so that I could put whatever I want on it. And since I have old hardware, uh, you know, I'm kind of forced I'm kind of forced to stick with window managers. I mean, I could run LXDE, I could run XFCE or LXQT on this uh, system here this computer here but I had gotten so used to using window managers that that's just kind of what I want to stick with and when I would look at systems that offered window managers I would boot them up and I would go that's, that didn't look very good <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to say it, but I'm shallow. I want a system that looks nice, too. Not only that's light on resources, but that looks nice. So I thought, man, I wish somebody would create a base system that looks halfway decent, that allows the user to put whatever they want on it and not have to remove a bunch of stuff. Just put whatever you want on the system and, you know, just make it your own and over time I learned a few things and that is basically where the idea of Mio Linux came from it was from my own frustrations my own wants and desires and I thought 
once I finally <clears throat> got to the point where I could give other people an ISO, I thought, surely, surely if they're, I mean, surely if, if this is how I feel about it, then I would almost bet that there are other people out there who would like that too. And when I produced Mio Linux for the first time, I thought, you know, if, if I were to get 50 downloads, that would be amazing to me. And it went well beyond that. Uh, a lot of, I know a lot of people, they might try Mio Linux without really understanding what it's about and what its purpose is. But there are people out there like me who want a base system that they can build their you know, build their system the way they want it. And that's what Mio Linux is about. There, it's missing a lot of stuff. You won't get a lot of the pre-installed packages that you would get on other systems. But that's on purpose. You know, I had to learn things the hard way. I remember when I first started using Linux, I went on to some forums and I was told, you need to CD into this, you need to CD into that, you need to sudo this and sudo... I didn't have a stinking clue what they were talking about. And I was too embarrassed to ask. And when I would ask about stuff for further detail, read the manual. Read the manual. You need to read the manual. So... <laughs> Basically, everything I've learned, I've learned it on my own. And... and you know, those guys were a bunch of jerks, but I did what they said. I read manuals, I went online, did research, trying to figure out things that they... I mean, good grief, I was a new user, had no idea what Linux was even about. And, you know, being told stuff like that. <laughs> but it's okay, it worked out in the end. So anytime someone asks me a question, if, if I can answer it, I will. I just remember being so frustrated and wishing, guys, just please help me. I don't know what in the world you're talking about. I don't know what I'm doing. I just need some help. But that's it. That's where the idea of Mio Linux came from. It was, it was from my own, my own wants and my own desires for a base system that looked nice and modern but still would allow the user to put on it whatever they want. As much as they want, as little as they want, so that they could make it their own. So there you go. You guys have a great weekend. Thanks for watching, and take care.